different ones, I get less sugar. The P in shape is for personality, okay? And some of you have personality with a capital P, all right? Personality refers to three things. It's the way you act, the way you feel, and the way you think, okay? Now, I've had people tell me, I don't even know where you came with that thought, okay? It's personality. And the root of our personality is the is the way you think because the way you think determines the way you feel and the way that you feel usually determines the way you act. So I put that in your notes because that's a real tough one. Okay? We'll talk again in personality. Even the Bible says, I ran out of room on that, okay? Every, even the Bible says that the root of your personality is your thought line. Proverbs 4.23 says, your life is shaped by your thoughts. By your thoughts. And everybody agrees that personality is very complex. And we're going to take a look at that in this series. I find it amazingly. And for 40 years, 40 years nearly here, I have just been enamored with personality and traits. And that happened because our, our, my wife's cousin, who did our premarital counseling back then in those days, I guess maybe 37 years I've been involved with that, maybe 38, and he, he did this personality profile on us, which I thought was the biggest waste of my time ever when I was going through the thing. Now my wife wishes he probably hadn't done it with us, okay, because I just went, wow, that is amazing. You know, we went through like 188 questions, right, and we, we answered these things, and then after that, I think, my gosh, this is taking forever. Then he says, I'll tell you what, we've been here a little while, why don't you go to the restroom, get a drink, and then come back and I'll, I'll tell you about yourself. I'm thinking, I've lived with myself for 22 years. I think I got it down. But it's amazing, our personality, and you got to be truthful about who you are, and your personality and your makeup with that. And, uh, with that. It's complex, it's part of your shape, your gifts, your heart, your ability, your personality. God wants to use your personality for a purpose. He gave it to you. It's assigned to you. It's not just something that came accidentally. He shaped you for a reason. The E stands for experiences. God plans experiences in your life to shape you. Romans 8, 28, we know that all that happens to us is working for good if we love God and are fitting into his plans. God is both organized and purposeful in planning the personal experiences he prepares for us. He uniquely allows things in your life. He doesn't cause them all, but he sees them and he allows them, even the bad, to bring good out of your life. He wants to work through your experiences. In the last session of our series here, we're going to talk about four kinds of experiences that God uses in our lives. And we'll conclude the series talking about how to get the most out of those experiences that we're having. You see, God never wastes a hurt. Never. And there are the five things that we're going to be looking at in the next several weeks, spiritual gifts, heart, ability, personality, experiences. These five things make you you. They make you who you are. And what can we say about your shape before we even get into the details? Well, let's talk about three things. Your shape. All these five factors are interrelated. You are a complex combination of gifts and heart and personality and abilities and experiences, they all work together. Each element influences the other. You are a combination of those things. Your shape is also fixed. It's stable. It endures. It's constant. It's fixed by God. Your shape does not change. As you go through different stages in life, you have different expressions. But your shape demonstrates itself early in life. And it continues for a lifetime. And you're not basically any different when you got started. The basic bent, the basic shape that God made you. 
your shape is fixed. If as a little child you were pulling pranks, you'll probably still be pulling pranks at 85. If you were wheeling and dealing in third grade at recess, trading marbles, when you're in the rest home, you'll probably be wheeling and dealing in bedpans. I don't know. It's your nature to be a wheeler and dealer. And third, it is irrepressible. You cannot be you. Got it? You cannot not be you. It's all you can be. There's no escaping you being you. You can try it to be like somebody else, but your real self will spur through. I'd like to be a great athlete. I'd like to be a great, I mean, I could try to be like that, but you'll learn pretty quickly. I cannot play the piano well, and I can't play the guitar well. Those are my two things of instruments I thought I wanted to play uh, with that. It's irrepressible, though. If you enjoy doing something over and over, you're going to repeat it. It becomes a pattern in your life. And the fact is, if your job does not allow you to express to express your basic shape of who you are, it's irrepressible. You're going to find some way to express it other than at work. It might be through a hobby. It may be through church. Some way it is part of your shape. Yeah. So let's close out. If I can, you are turn that good law. Four benefits. And I could just to make it. You know, Four benefits of understanding our shame. And why should I bother, you might ask? Why should I bother to understand how God shaped me? Why should we spend several weeks, Mark, instead of just one sermon, looking at this? Well, first, first of all, this isn't the first one yet. First, a random list of issues that your shape explains. Okay? For instance, once you understand your shape, it explains how you respond to authority. It explains how you handle criticism, how you like to be led. The way God has made you and designed you explains how you deal with confrontation with that. I've been accused of liking confrontation. How you handle power and freedom, how you make friends, why you lose interest in a task, or when you, and when you do it, why you find it hard to get started in a new activity sometimes. You just thought you were uh, a procrastinator, right? Why you get close to people, why you don't get close to people. It's all explained by your shape that God gave you. Your shape explains what makes you mad what makes you sad, what makes you worried, what makes you happy, what makes you fearful. Because it's you. And that's why this may be one of the most important series that we do. Four benefits of building your life around your safe, discovering what your spiritual gifts are, your heart, your ability, your personality, your experiences, and looking at them, and then building your life on the way that God has shaped you. So, four benefits. Put me a little while together. Okay. First of all, it reduces stress. You stop comparing yourself to other people. Oh, I wish I was like so-and-so. I wish I could do that. Okay? The Bible says in Corinthians, don't do it. It's dumb to compare yourself. Stop comparing yourself to others. You need to stop trying to do what you're not gifted to do. You are gifted, and you do things that only you can do. Relax and be confident in that. It, redu it redu reduces your stress. You maximize what you're good at and don't worry about the rest. That's a stress. <clears throat> Secondly, it increases success. Now, New Year, we all want to be successful, right? Whether it's playing cards this afternoon or whatever, or in our work. But what is success? It's not about making a lot of money. And I know a lot of people making a lot of money who aren't successful. And you do too, I'm sure. Success is knowing God's will and being right in the center of it. 
Success is being what God meant you to be. It's figuring out who you are and then being it. Finding your niche and saying, that's me. That's success. Third, it deepens satisfaction. A satisfying life is when you are doing what you're shaped to do, what God made for you to do. Freedom comes from doing what you're gifted to do. You enjoy what God made you to be. Be content. All of a sudden, you feel the love of God a whole lot more. Wow, God made me that way. It's too bad for other people. You see, because you're in harmony with his plan. And fourth, it builds self-esteem. Doing what you're shaped to do builds that self-esteem. And aren't we all about that in our world today? So, hey, this is good. Find your shape. You know, we don't want anyone to have low self-esteem. You know, that's why we got to use pronouns the right way and all this other sort of thing here. Not being too political there. You know, we're afraid that everyone's going to have poor self-esteem. You know, one of the reasons studies say that over 50% of all people in their jobs are in the wrong jobs. Ready? And I believe that genuinely, not pop psychologist self-esteem, but genuine self-esteem is built on two biblical truths. Not on raising yourself up to your, your, by your bootstraps or by positive thinking or I'm okay, you're not so hot. <laughs> you remember the book, I'm okay, you're okay? Seagull, you let me down, the 70s, 80s people. Boy, I'm really showing my age. You know, you know, genuine self-esteem is built on two things. First of all, it's built on the truth that you matter to God. Jesus Christ proved that. He died on the cross. He didn't die for junk. He died for you. Jesus Christ proved that. How much you matter to him by giving his life on the cross for you. And secondly, you are shaped by God for a purpose. You matter to God and you were shaped by God for a purpose. You know, I believe we have so many confused youth, so many in their 20s and 30s that are so confused because they never begin to understand this. And they try to search for themselves. And we have all kinds of philosophies thrown out there that we didn't pay any attention to in our schools. Thank you, COVID. Now we're aware with that. The truth is that we matter to God and we're shaped for a purpose. And when you get those two things, that's going to build genuine self-esteem in your life. We talk about the first all the time, that you matter to God. But I want to talk about in the series how God has shaped you for a purpose. And maybe you don't feel that your life has mattered much up to this point. And the series will hopefully be a turning point for that. You matter to God. And then as you establish that relationship with God, you continue to grow that relationship with Jesus, you begin to live the way that he wants you to. And then to help you discover who God made you to be. That's what the next five weeks are about. To help us as we begin a new year to get into shape. Hey, I think it's a great excuse to wear sweats for the next five weeks. Sounds good to me. I think I'm going. Got pretty fun just putting on sweatpants today. Put on a t-shirt. By the way, I would never work out in this shirt. But my wife said it went with the 